so picky, but I have such a picky ball. Okay, let's, we're beginning, we're rolling. It's kind of funny, guys, so you probably want to laugh. <laughs> Okay, sound for questions. Okay. What was it like when you went, what was it like when you met with Martin Davidson about this role? Are you anything at all like Eddie? In the movie, is that your voice or was your singing dubbed? Did you pattern Eddie after any particular rock star? You were a chef when you were discovered for acting roles. How did that come about? With this movie and the movie you're going to do for Walter Hill, Streets of Fire, you're probably going to be into a stardom type thing. Does that worry you, the loss of anonymity and all that? Okay, that's probably it. Yep. Okay. okay, we're rolling. Okay. okay. Michael, you tried to get away, but we caught you just in the nick of time. <laughs> I tried to get away? I was here. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad that you didn't get away before we had a chance to meet and talk about Eddie and the Cruisers. Because let me tell you, first of all, I enjoyed the movie very much. Great. And I just think that Michael Paré is now going to be a name that everybody will know. I hope you're right. <laughs> so. Do you, though, a kind of fear that loss of anonymity that's surely going to happen now with this one and then Streets of Fire when that comes out? No, I mean, if you're going into show business and you want to be, uh, you know, a reckless, forget it. You know, I'm, that's Hollywood. I'm going to be out there and uh, that's what I get paid for. And all the fans and everything, you'll just eat it up, huh? Yep. <laughs> I hope I get as many fans that I have to worry about. When you went in to be interviewed for this role, what was it like? What took place at that time? Um, Marty just looked at me a lot the first time. You know, he's, he has a really weird look in his eyes sometimes. And he asked a few simple questions and he said, okay. And I left and I came back again. He did the same thing. It's some very vague questions. And then he brought me back to do improvisations and I guess that's what got me the job. What, uh, what sort of improvisation did he want you to do? Um, well, we did it with the whole cast. He got the whole cast together in a loft in uh, Soho. And uh, I did a couple of things with Sally Amato, played by Matthew Lawrence, right? He's the, me and him are the oldest members of the band. So it was how we met, uh, how Joanne Carlino and I met. <laughs> I stole Joanne from Sally, you know. And uh, let's see, it did a, uh, with, with Doc, with, uh, Joey Pantoliano played Doc Watson. It was a, I had a big explanation with him to why I keep Word Man in the band. Because, you know, it's in the movie, you know, he can't play, he can't sing, he can't play the piano. He's got something magic there, Doc, and that's where, you know, the words and music thing comes in. Did you make that up or was that in the script? <laughs> no, no, I'm okay. just an actor. I can't write. <laughs> um, in the movie, of course, you're singing, and it's so wonderful and so convincing, and I love the music. I think it's just great. Uh, did you do your own singing, or was your voice dubbed? Oh, that was, uh, I lip synced to John Carpenter of Beaver Brown. He did all the music. But you do it so well. That's a tough order. That's tough. Yeah, I'm a good actor. <laughs> a lot of good actors can't lip sync, though. Yeah. <laughs> Are you anything at all like Eddie? I could be. You know, if, uh, but you see, my life is going wonderful. Eddie had it rough. You know, uh, the producers didn't like his stuff, and uh, producers like my stuff. And you started out to be a chef? 
Oh, no, I was a chef for a couple of years. I went to cooking school for two years, and then uh, I was working around Manhattan for a couple of years, and uh, I was studying acting at the same time. Once I learned how to cook, it wasn't a challenge enough. You know, it was just a job again. And then how were you actually discovered for acting roles? Uh, Joyce Selznick and Jim McCormick were hired to do a talent search for ABC's uh, talent development program. And I snuck in, you know, because my agent didn't want me to go in. So I had somebody else get me in there. And uh, let's see, Joyce had been looking for me. I don't know where the hell she saw my picture, but she says, we've been waiting for you to come in. Uh, you don't know me. But let's see, after I met her two weeks later, she sent me a check and an airplane ticket and put me on TV. So you weren't tossing a Caesar salad someplace when no, she found No, no. <laughs> that was Joyce's quote, you know. <laughs> she gets away with stuff like that. <laughs> Did you pattern Eddie after any particular rock star? No, that was all me. That was all imagination and acting. Uh, it would have been too simple to like imitate or even you know steal gestures and you know attitude. So I you know went for the whole ball of wax, and either it was going to be a bomber or it'd be a hit. Did you? Uh, uh, do you have it in your own likes and dislikes? Do you have? some rock stars that you're especially fond of? Oh yeah, Jerry Lee Lewis, Chuck Berry, Elvis, Buddy Holly. I mean, that's good clean rock and roll. Yeah, but you're too young to have grown up with them. Hey, they're still on the radio. You know, it's old as but goody stations in every city. And that's what you like, huh? Yeah, that's all I listened to for like all of high school. It's interesting you bring up Buddy Holly because my feeling about Eddie and the Cruisers as I sat there watching it was that it is the best movie, the best rock m movie I have seen since the Buddy Great. Holly. I like it a lot. Um, okay. Um, the ending of this movie, there are some people who are saying, and we don't want to give it away, God forbid, but some people are saying, is it or isn't it? And they're a little bit, you know, they don't know. Now, uh, what is your reaction to people who are going to walk out of the theater thinking, is it or isn't it? Well, that's why we did it that way, is to make them wonder. Oh, you do want them to wonder? Yeah. Ah. You see, because they didn't need me for that last shot. <laughs> 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 oh, no, I'm just kidding around. <laughs> but are, are you happy with the ending the way it is? Yeah. That was a great night. You know, they closed up four blocks of Madison Avenue, had a big crane go up. You know, that was, I knew I was in the movies then. Yeah. Well, you sure are in the movies, Michael, from here on. And I hope I have a chance to talk with you when Streets of Fire comes out, Walter Hill's Streets of Fire. What kind of a role is that for you? Uh, it's real heroic, kind of like John Wayne or Clint Eastwood. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a Western without horses. It's like contemporary Western. Lots of fun to do? Oh, yeah. I, do, I had a 10-day fight scene. It took 10 days to film this fight scene, and we get all get all bloodied and swinging sledgehammers and really duking it out. And the wonderful world of movie making goes on and on. Yeah. Hey, Michael, nice to see you. Hey, thank you Enjoyed very much. Enjoyed meeting you. My class. And you are now relieved. You may leave. <laughs>